in today's video I'm reviewing the Sloan sweater. I've made two and it's a collaboration with Karina from Lift and Pins and Needles. We've both used some challenging fabric shall we say and we're going to talk you through that. So do stay tuned. Welcome back. If we're just meeting, my name's Claire and on this channel I talk about plus size dressmaking. So if that kind of thing interests you and you want to learn more, do hit that subscribe button down in the corner and then you'll be notified when I have new videos that are released. For a little while now I've been involved in the testing for Love Notions patterns. They traditionally go up to 3x but they've been trying to increase their sizes on their patterns to 4x and 5x and I've been involved in that. I'll put a picture on screen of the basic tee that I tested. So I didn't actually test the Sloan sweater, the one I'm wearing now, but the pattern was made available to me and it is the Feature Friday pattern today at Love Notions. So they are selling it for $5, which is half price. So I'll put a link down below for that where you can go and grab this jumper after the video. Just to let you know, it will be an affiliate link. So hashtag ad for that. If you don't want to use my affiliate link, that's absolutely fine. You can go over to the Love Notions website and search for Sloan Sweater and you'll find it. So I was chatting to my good friend Karina, we chat most days, and we were chatting about the fact that this was being released and I wanted to do a video on it and so did Karina. So we thought as we both want to do videos on it, it makes sense for us to do another collaboration. Now we did collaborate a while ago on the Liliana jacket by Seamwack, which I will link above for you if you want to have a watch of that. And that was a little while ago. And that's really when I got to know Karina and we've remained really good friends since. You'll probably know Karina from her channel, Lifting Pins and Needles. If you don't know the channel, do go over and subscribe after you've watched this video. Karina is a very experienced seamstress and I've learned so, so much from her. And in every video she offers a wealth of information. In Karina's video she is going to be doing a sew along over on her channel so if you want to know more about that do head over after you've watched my video. On this video I'm going to be doing more of a review, she'll be doing more of a sew along and our videos will complement each other so I hope you enjoy that. So let's talk about the Sloan sweater. I'll put a picture here of the pattern. I'm just reading off my paper here. It says it's got two bodies. It's got a yoke, a hood, patches and a pocket. And it's perfect for winter. But actually you could wear this in summer as well if you wanted because you could make it in a thin fabric like I've done here. So I'm just gonna read off what it says about it. So view A features a front and back yoke, a high low shirt tail hem and a slimmer flattering silhouette. View B is the standard pullover with a banded bottom and relaxed fit. So there's lots of versatility in this pattern. It's such a basic pattern. It's got a front, a back and a sleeve and a hood if you like and patches etc. But it's such a basic top you could do what you want and I have some really good ideas that I will share with you at the end of the video so do stay tuned for that so it's a relaxed fit as you can see from this and it's got a dropped shoulder so I did actually I took my dropped shoulder up about an inch so it would be down here on me but that's because I got small shoulders but still it's there so it is dropped there's my shoulder and that's how far it comes down. So in terms of sizes, this pattern is being released today in extra sizes, so up to a 5X. So those sizes include up to 57.5 bust, 49.5 waist, and 59.5 hips. Now that's the actual measurements, but there is quite a lot of ease in this pattern. For example, there's 6.5 inches of ease in the bust, and by ease I mean positive ease, that's extra room, which normally in a knit you might get less room, which would be negative ease, but in this pattern it's got loads of room. 
so it's not tight fitting at all. The waist actually has 11.5 inches of ease and the hips 3.5, but it's not gonna go down to your hips anyway, so that doesn't matter. So even if you're outside the top range of this pattern, I think you could probably get away with sewing it up. I sewed a 3X up and I fit the right measurement for the bust, but my hips and my waist were not within that size range. And so that just goes to show, I'll put some pictures here of me wearing it and you can see that there was plenty of room for me there. So this fabric I used, basically the situation was, I haven't got a great deal of jersey fabrics, especially heavier weight ones, and I'm not in a position to be buying fabric at the moment. So I had to make do with what I had. Now I had some rib knit fabric, this one and this one here. So last year when I was running my fabric shop, I ordered 10 meters of each for my shop, but it didn't sell. So I've got it left to use. And I needed to use it for something. I might actually use it for the boyfriend cardigan from Love Notions, which might be my next make, if not the jean jacket. Um, but I needed to use it for something and I thought I'd give it a go. Now, initially I thought the fabric was too lightweight. It is very lightweight. I would say, I'd say it's t-shirt weight. And I wasn't sure, I debated, I was chatting to Karina and I debated actually doing a double sided top so that you could wear it either way and that way it would thicken up the fabric and make it more wearable. But when it came to cutting this fabric out, I decided that it actually was thick enough to just be worn on its own. Now this is more of a summer sweater, it's not a winter sweater at all, but it can be if you use a thicker fabric. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about rib knit because you don't often hear people talking about rib knit and I certainly before sewing this up didn't know a great deal about it and Karina was very helpful in that situation. So when you think of rib knit you might think of the stuff that goes around your cuff or around your hem and that when you buy that that comes in a tubular piece and it's very very tightly knitted that's what I would think of and it might be what you would think of too but there is another type of knit fabric and that's this and it's this is a type of knit fabric that you use for your actual main fabric rather than your cuffs or your hems because it's used in a different way it's much lighter and it's the ribs are often quite a lot thinner I've got some fabrics that I can show you some examples with because I went through a stage of buying loads of rib knits so when I bought this off eBay, I thought this one was cuff fabric, but it's actually not. You can see it's quite thick, but it's the main thing, the main reason you couldn't use this for cuffs is it's so lightweight. Well, I suppose you could use it for cuffs if you really wanted to, but I don't think it would work that well. It's much better as a main piece. I haven't got an awful lot. I've got about half a metre of this. So I don't know what I'm going to do with that. But as you can see, this one's got quite a wide rib and it stretches. You can see me as it stretches. I've got another rib knit there. That's not very opaque. You can see it's got quite flat ribs there and quite wide. And I've got an irregular rib knit here. I might use this for a long duster cardi actually. If you see the ribs are different, but they've got some thick and some thin. The main characteristic they all share for the ones that you use for the main fabric is that they're lightweight and they're loose in nature. Now I've also got a couple of rib knits and this is the stuff that I would use for cuffs. So here's a white piece. I don't know if it's going to show up on camera, but the ribs are tiny. It actually runs perpendicular to the salvage here, which I don't know if one I'm wearing and doesn't, but so if you can hear upstairs screaming. And then I've got a pink one here, which is just similar to the white one. 
and the difference with this one is it's a very closely knitted with this one they might do two knit two pal and that will give them quite a small but not tiny rib ones like this will be knit one pal one so the rib is so tiny you can barely see it if you can see it at all but you can also get the wider ribs that are maybe two by two three by three etc which you would have seen in my previous fabrics there and that will just make the rib wider as mentioned the ribs normally run parallel to the salvage so that when you stretch them out they're really really stretchy so i wanted to give you a few tips about using knit fabric on a sewing machine and on a serger so if you're sewing on a sewing machine you'll want to use a ballpoint i was going to say a pen ballpoint pen a ballpoint needle look who's come to visit me say hello frederick so if you're sewing on a sewing machine you'll want to use a ballpoint needle he's gone if possible use your walking foot as that will make sure the fabric feeds through evenly and if possible loosen up the tension on your foot because if it's a tight tension it might stretch the fabric if it comes through that's if you're not using a walking foot and if you're going to sew on a serger you'll want a higher differential feed and a wider stitch width and that will just make it look a lot neater so i'm not going to go too much into construction because over on Karina's channel, on her video, she's going to be doing an actual sew along. So you'll see the process there. I'll just talk very briefly about what I'm going to do. Or what I did do, I should say. The one I'm wearing now was the first one I made. And then this was the second one. I have to turn my light down a bit. This was the second one that I made. So you will see photos either now, before, after. At some point you're going to have seen photos of me wearing both of these. The first thing I did was put the... So I put the shoulders together first off. I don't ever read instructions and don't... There's no point in expecting me to read instructions. I don't. So I don't know what the actual instructions are like. But I know how to put a top together so I just did it my way now if you want to know how I put it together you can check out my sew along for the laundry day tea which was by the same company because it's the same process but I did stabilize the shoulders now Karina is going to go into how to stabilize the shoulders so do check that out but basically that's the inside and there's a little bit of organza strip just there that's just because because it's a knit fabric it will relax and go out of shape over time and using a piece of woven strip or you could use a piece of ribbon you could use anything um, and that will just hold it in place so I always do that when I create a knit top so once I'd done that I then hemmed the sleeves for this pattern I wanted to do something a little bit different that I haven't done before so I decided I wanted to do a lettuce hem on my um, top so you can see it there and that's what I've done on the hem but I've also done it on the sleeves that it doesn't it's not as lettuce -y as you might think on the sleeves and that might be because it's just a small area but I've done it on these ones as well, as you can see there. And on the hem there. And it was a, such a simple thing to do. I'd never done it before and I checked out an article, I think it was that Love Notions had actually created. And it was super, super simple. I filmed a little bit of footage when I was making it, so I'm going to take you over there right now. I've just been having a play around on my serger to try and create a lettuce hem. Now, I had a practice on this one. It's a tiny bit wavy, as you can see there, but it's not really. Karina spotted my mistake, and that is because I sewed it on the wrong side. I should have sewed it this way, so it's following the ribs. So that's what I did next, and I had a play with that. So I did that and I created that. 
so as you can see that is much better because I've done it following the ribs so it's going ac goes across there's the ribs vertically and it's going horizontally across so let me move you over to my serger I took out the left needle as per instructions online and I've whacked both looper dials right up to nine a little tip if you're going to give this a go take a photograph of your settings before you change them otherwise you'll never remember what they are and then on the side I turn the differential feed right down as far as it would go and then I tried again so then I tried again and this is actually the bottom of the sleeve that I'm going to make and that's what I created and I'm quite happy with that so I'm going to go ahead and do the other sleeve and also the hem at the bottom of the top so here's the hem of my other sleeve piece so I am going to go ahead and do that now and I'll show you how I do that there may be some shake as my serger does shake a lot making sure I've got the right side of the fabric facing up I start to feed it through so I just get it a little bit in maybe a bit more and then I start to pull it so I pull it tight not too tight so it comes out but tight enough so there's my other one not quite as curly as the previous one so the curls really happen when you're pulling the fabric taut as you go through and you really want to sew it the way that you want the stretch um but yeah that's it just remember to take off your seam allowance if you don't want your seam allowance because this doesn't actually require any seam allowance so that's it so let's go back to present day claire so as you can see from that footage it is super super simple to do and i'm going to be doing it loads more because i hate hemming and this is so simple so yeah the process was simple i sewed the shoulder seams up i attached the arms and down the side then i hemmed the bottom now a little tip what i always do is that I sew up one side but not the other side and then I can hem while the hem is still flat so you've got the front and the back still attached to each other but it's not in a circle if you know what I mean and so that just makes hemming a lot lot easier and more professional looking that was a tip I put picked up from Anika at Made to Sew some time ago and it's something I always employ now so once I'd hemmed the bottom, I then did the other sleeve and sewed up the other side and then I attached the hem band. I did show how I attach my hem bands in my sew along for the Aldi LDT, the laundry day tee. So do check that out if you have difficulty with these. But as you can see, it's come out really well a few of my thoughts on this pattern initially i wasn't that taken with the pattern but it was offered to me for free so i thought why not then i thought about the fact that i didn't have the appropriate fabric but i did actually see online if you look on instagram you'll see lots and lots of people have made this up and in quite lightweight fabrics as well and so that gave me the confidence to go ahead now as you can see I did the 3x and although that was right for my measurements at the bust it was too small at the waist and hips but you can see look at this I've got so much fabric probably the fact that I've made it in a rib knit is giving me a little bit of extra room because it's so stretchy when I imagined this in my head before I'd made it I was not convinced that this was going to suit me. I imagined it was going to be quite tight and show all my lumps and bumps. And it's very, very rare for me to do a long sleeve. This is probably, this might even be the first long sleeve that I have ever done. Certainly since I've been making clothes that fit me well. My go-to sleeve length is elbow. I, I'm not really a fan of full-on long sleeves just because I don't think it suits me but I might change my mind now actually I have big biceps and normally have to do a bicep adjustment I didn't do a bicep adjustment here 
and this it's I didn't extend or shorten the arms and it's come just at the right place now I didn't hem it traditionally so I did have a little bit of extra there so do bear that in mind I think with Karina's she had to add some extra inches because she does have long arms so just bear that in mind um, but she'll talk more about that on her channel I also wasn't convinced by such a high neckline but it's supposed to be a jumper and so the long sleeve is just right and I've made I have made no adaptions the only adaption was that I bought in the drop shoulder by one inch and that brought it up to the right place because I have small short because I have small shoulders um, I didn't do a bust adjustment didn't need one by the looks of it so I'm definitely going to be making more of these um, I have got a brilliant idea well if I say so myself um, so I've got this scuba fabric and I was saying to you guys before, I didn't know what to do with it. I've got three metres of this. I have the, I've had this years. I bought it from Fabwax about three years ago. And I always had in my mind to make some sort of bomber jacket. Now, I actually think this pattern would be really good to do that with. Because it's got the drop shoulder and it's got loads and loads of room. I'm going to make this up. So this will be the exterior fabric. So I'm going to put a zip down the centre front, put a neck band on and a hem band and cuff bands. And I might actually, I might use this stuff if I've got enough because there's a similar colour flower there. Because it is so roomy, I can put the Sherpa. You know I love my Sherpa and I am thinking to put that on the inside and it is going to be so snuggly for winter. It is going to make me appear a bit bigger which I know was some of your concern. Thanks for that concern but warmth is my priority this winter. It's starting to get really cold and damp now and I just need to be warm at all costs. Don't hold me to when it's going to be done because I've got a deadline list up to here right now. All things you're going to find out about in due course. But I'm busy, busy, busy at the moment. I'm also trying to finish the decorating. So, you know, it might be a little while, but I am going to do that. So if you're looking for a quick and simple make, one that you can do in an hour. I made both of these tops this afternoon and did my filming as well and my research for filming as well it just did not take very long at all this is a super super simple pattern it's so comfortable as well and it's so roomy which is great if you don't like a tight fitting one i would say if you're more used to a tight fitting top to size down because there is so much space in here so if you would like to buy this on the Feature Friday deal, do click my link down below and you can grab that deal. It's only for today that it is available for $5. I think then it goes up to $10. So it's definitely worth getting today, especially if you're looking for a hoodie top or just any kind of knit jumper really you can do so much as i say i'm going to turn mine into a bomber jacket at some point so once you've got your pattern do go and head over to karina's channel lifting pins and needles which will be linked down below and watch her video because i know she's going to offer you loads of tips tricks and techniques that are going to be really helpful for when you make your garment and while you're over there don't forget to subscribe to karina because she offers so much value and you you are just going to make yourself a better sewer for watching her channel you really are and i know that's happened to me do let me know down in the comments below have you ever sewn with knit fabrics like rib knit fabrics like this what are your tips and tricks for using that fabric so if you liked this video and you did get some value out of it, do hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell to be notified when my next video will be re released. I do like to do 
deep dives into particular patterns rather than just do it showing a here's what I made this month as I make them I do a review about it so if that does interest you do hit the subscribe button and leave me a comment click like if you like this content and I will see you in the next one happy sewing bye for now You can fly higher than